Hey there guys, like PC guy here with the news in tech and gaming for the week. I will be skipping the gaming part of it this week because BlizzCon is happening and I will have separate videos for that which I'll put up a bit later. I'll try to do uh, sum up of the first day, of the second day if it's actually worth it depending on what uh, is announced on that day. And then later on uh, a piece with my opinion on the things and I'll try to keep the first two videos strictly facts and the last one for the opinions that I have on the announcements. I'd also like to apologize in advance for any breathing or sniffing noises that you might hear. I have kind of a stuffy nose uh, because of the weather. So I'll try to edit it out if it's really bad, but some of them might slip through. Anyhow, there has been a couple of hardware releases worth mentioning this week, particularly the 1660 Super from NVIDIA, the graphics card I mean, and the 9900KS from Intel as far as processors goes. While they are worth mentioning, they are not exactly super exciting. The 1660 Super will add another card to an already pretty stacked product uh, lineup at the mid to entry range budget. It's retailing for about 270-ish from what I can see at least here in the Netherlands. And it is biting on the heels of the 6060 Ti. It is quite a lot better than the 6060 plain edition let's call it so it is an improvement in terms of price for performance considering the ti is selling for a higher value and this one does pretty much almost the same but at a lower price so in that case it is worth it still falls short of amd's rx 5700 although that one is also more expensive however this is more of an attack on the entry level under the 5700 where amd will soon enough as far as i know be launching the 5500 and possibly an xd version uh, later on so this is probably the nvidia's target and they're trying to anticipate that and as far as comparison goes we'll have to wait until the 5500 is out to actually make our judgment in terms of performance and price in the process side of things the 9900ks is pretty much what we already expected it is nearly the same as the 9900k it is uh, faster considering it has a lower, a higher boost clock up to 5 GHz all cores. However, while it is better, it is also quite a lot more expensive. And uh, to be honest, most 9900Ks, the vast majority, will be able to boost to 5 GHz all clocks. There have also been a, bit, a few issues in that, uh, for example, Steve from Gamers Nexus has uncovered that the 9900KS will not always reach the f advertised 5 GHz all core boost. And it depends a bit on the motherboard implementation of power phases and how they treat the boost uh, time on the board if they leave it on indefinitely or if they will. Uh, limited to a certain amount of time and then drop back down to 4.7 GHz all core. While it stands to reason that it can reach the 5 GHz all core, so the CPU is capable of it, so and you could put the blame on the motherboard, it also means that there's a bit of a conflict between the advertising and the reality because it's advertised as a 127 TDP part in terms of power consumption. And if it is boosting to 5 GHz all core, it is far beyond that TDP. So one, you have to kind of pick and choose. Do you say that they do respect the TDP, but do not hit the advertised clock? Or do you say that the clock reaches what is advertised, but however the TDP is advertised falsely? So it's a bit of a pick and choose on that aspect. In any case, the TDP has been a point of contention for a long time now, as in it does not accurately reflect the reality of using the product. So it's kind of a difficult point to pick at very specifically however it remains the case and you will need a pretty good cooler for the cpu if you wanted to reach those uh, advertised boost frequencies as far as value for money goes considering the how expensive it is selling the, our, our recommendation remains the same if you want it purely for gaming and purely for a bit more single core oriented uh, performance then definitely the 9900ks is what you should go for I would still recommend a 9900K unless you want the very best of the best because the 9900K is a bit cheaper and it will reach the 5 GHz all core. If you are on a bit more of a budget, the 9700K is also perfect for pure gaming. However, if you do literally anything else on your PC, go for the 3900X. That's basically my recommendation considering the increased core and thread count and it, it does not perform that far behind in terms of 
single core performance anyway. A few articles have popped up on AMD's big Navi, as it is called, GPU, which is basically the Navi based uh, GPU that will supposedly compete with the 2080 Ti. There have been a few news passing out that uh, it has passed RRA certification, which is one of the last steps in getting it out into the market, and means that the design is finalized, there will be no further changes as far as actual design goes, and it is basically ready for production and selling. As the article in the WCCF Tech explains, the code name used for the article kind of tells us what it is. The D18 in the article assumes it is a Navi family, considering the past naming scheme, that is how it works. D18 stands for Navi Architecture, and the 802 is kind of somewhat related to the performance and how powerful the GPU is. Considering the first Navis were 200 and something, these are 800 and something, so it is definitely a better and improved version of the Navi architecture. There's a small breakdown of the naming scheme of the things and why we can pretty safely come to this conclusion, but you can go through it if you would like. But in any case, I would like to temper everyone's expectations a little bit. First of all, when a uh, product passes RRA certification, it can take quite a bit for it to even come to market usually three to six months. However, it is not uncommon for it to take all the way up to an entire year. So it doesn't mean it will be out before Christmas or even this year or even at the start of next year. It just means that it has passed certification or filed for certification. Other thing that I want to point out is that we do know that AMD will be powering the PS5 and the Xbox in terms of a GPU. So it could possibly be that this is not even a graphics card as we are expecting for the desktop to possibly contend with the 2080 Ti or high level or even surpass it, so bucket of salt on this for now. Funnily enough, the day after, literally the day after that this information was uh, made available to the public, which is when you file for a certification like this, it is publicly visible, so it's not crazy that people got their hands on it, but the day afterwards there are immediately leaks for NVIDIA's next generation cards. And I'm calling them leaks, but the timing is just so convenient, it's very easy to assume that NVIDIA just threw the information out there, and this guy does a leak, so that they can, if they do not deliver on what they are leaking, they can always claim that, uh, no, that's not an official information, that's a leak. So, you know, they're always safe. And on the other hand, it kind of builds up the hype for NVIDIA as well and tries to take the attention a little bit of, of AMD's upcoming cards. In any case, the leak kind of does drum up the 30,000, I'm guessing, uh, 3,000 even, series of uh, NVIDIA GPUs quite a little bit. It's basically hitting all the points. They're claiming that it will have better performance, 100 to 200 at least megahertz increase in terms of clock speed, better ray tracing, lower power consumption, more VRAM, and that they will be cheaper than the 20, the, the 2000 lineup on top of it. So it basically is hitting all the points. It does sound a little bit too good to be true, but we'll have to wait and see. And oh yeah, they also claim an improvement in rasterization, so it will also be better at traditional games. The one downside that this leak claims the cards have is that they run at very low voltage, like sub 1 volt uh, in terms of voltage. So this could potentially hamper overclocking a little bit and we might not be able to overclock them a lot. But it, like I said, this is a very early leak, there's no specific numbers, the timing is extremely fishy, so we'll have to see if this is any of this is really true. And uh, yeah, uh, as far as the voltage thing goes, it might be something that can be uh, kind of worked around by a bit of extreme measures like flashing or bias or something like that. In any case, if it does turn out to be true, obviously it's welcome news, especially the part where they will be cheaper than their current generation counterparts. However, it does say that it will be slightly cheaper, so even if this is all true, it could well be uh, $50 cheaper or something, and they're technically not lying. But then you'll have, a, instead of a $1,200 CP, GPU, you'll have a $1,150 GPU, which, yeah, uh, does it really make a huge difference? Is it really worth bragging about? Not really. But we'll have to see how it is uh, at that time with NVIDIA's competition and Intel's entry to the market, what they will release, or how it will impact the market, and so on. Speaking of, AMD of, speaking of AMD and speaking of money, AMD has been reporting increased revenue this time around. It's quite significantly higher. It's reporting that they have had the qu highest quarterly revenue since 2005, 
probably because of the success of their 70nm lineup, specifically Ryzen and Epic. Radeon lineup for GPUs has had some success, but not nearly as crazy as those uh, CPU sides of things. Keep in mind that their revenue is still dwarfed completely by Intel, but it is quite a gain. If you look at the details that the article uh, lays out, they have posted 1.8 billion revenue for the third quarter, which is 9% higher than last year and 18% higher than the last quarter. It is most likely due, like I said, to the 7 meter uh, process that they have been using. The Ryzen sales have been growing quite a, a lot. Specifically, the client division, 36% year over year. However, you have to remember that they have been having shortage in terms of supply, so they could be growing even more if they actually had enough CPUs to sell. Their CPUs are selling for more, and they actually have high-end products this time that command a higher price, which also helps. And as far as server goes, they have had a 50% quarterly increase in Epic sales. 50%, that's quite a lot. You have to remember that deals for data centers and servers, they are laid out a few years in advance. Whatever deals they have struck right now, you will still be seeing the income coming in in future quarters or even future years. But it is already a 50% quarterly increase right now. Something that has dragged down the numbers a bit is the fact that the next generation of consoles is right around the corner, so the past generation of console sales are falling down significantly, which does impact AMD because they do provide hardware for those consoles, and as you can see here in the article, that segment has been down 27% year over year and 11% in the last quarter. The article finishes by saying they are projecting even higher revenues next quarter with 2.1 billion, which would be 48% year on year and 17% more than this quarter, and it would be quite historical because it would be the highest revenue quarterly, that is, in the company's entire history. Now this article, if I am, you know, reporting it like this, sounds like an enormous uh, AMD ego stroke, but that's not really the case. The case is, I'm not an AMD fanboy, I don't even own AMD products to be quite honest, but I am very happy to see that AMD is doing very well, because that can only mean, I've said it multiple times in the past, having strong competition can only mean good things for us. And in this case, there's two, AMD is bringing competition in two fronts, the GPU and the CPU, and without AMD, both of these fronts have no one to compete with the current uh, monopoly owners, let's call it, Intel and uh, Nvidia. So if AMD is not doing well, not only you'll see worse pricing and performance in GPUs, because Intel is not forced to compete, they can just milk us with uh, tiny little increases at every generation, but you will also not see any improvement, any noticeable improvement in the GPU side of things, because Nvidia will also not care enough to actually have some innovation. Seeing AMD do good financially means that they'll have more people for research and development, they can push their products further, increase their market share, put the pressure on those other two companies, and it is us, the consumers, that will benefit from it in the end, both in pricing and in terms of the actual capabilities of the hardware. On Intel side of things, a few more products are scheduled to hit the market in 2020 that we know of now, most specifically in their Ice Lake Xeon lineup, Specifically, uh, products with 36 cores, 76 threads, this would be on 10 nanometer, and 14 nanometer, 48 cores, 96 threads, uh, Copper Lake Xeon. So these are a bit more, you know, higher end products than we home users would use. We actually wouldn't even want to use them because they would run at lower frequencies, and for what most of us run them, that is, uh, they would be worse even if that crazy amount, of course. In any case, these are going to be competing with Epic, uh, nat naturally, and, well, remains to be seen how the performance will be doing. This is just literally a roadmap telling us when they will be coming. There's no further details other than what I just read. Oh yeah, and the fact that they'll have more PCIe lanes. So if you actually want to compare them side by side, you're going to have to wait until they're out. In any case, uh, AMD will probably have Zen 3 out or almost out by that time, so those will be the real competition, not today's Zen 2 CPUs, so all up in the air uh, how much the CPU market will evolve in the next year, but it is looking quite promising. Last but definitely not the least, Steam has launched, finally, its uh, library update to help us kind of navigate through the thousands of games that they have a little bit easier. Features advanced filtering that we can, well, search for games that we actually are interested to in, and it is just a bit visually more appealing. 
Well, this has been it for the news in terms of tech uh, for this week. Like I said, for gaming, I'm going to focus on BlizzCon on other separate videos. It's going to be a bit of a busier weekend than week for me because I'll be putting out more videos than I usually do. And time for recording is short. But like I said, the first video will cover the first day's announcements, the second video, the second day, if they are worth covering in a separate video. And they'll be very fact-oriented videos, not much of an opinion piece. And then I'll try to do sometime throughout the week an opinion video on uh, what I think about the announcements of the features and all of those things in the separate video to keep it information and then what I think of it separate for people that just want to know the facts and what actually was uh, released. In any case, if you enjoy our content and would like to help the channel, drop a like and share this video, uh, leave us a comment saying what you think, and consider subscribing if you would like to help the channel grow in the future. This has been Attic PC Guy. again apologies for a bit of uh, runny nose and a bit of possible breathing and sniffing. And I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video. Have fun.